Hello and welcome back once again to my um, series on learning how to paint with acrylics. I hope you're getting a lot of good techniques so far and that you're making a lot of progress. Today um, I'd like to focus on creating distance between foreground and background objects. We've already discussed perspective, but this time I'd like to discuss, um, especially with landscapes, creating kind of a mist or a fog as you move into the background. This creates more of a distance between the foreground where the viewer is and the background where um, the distant subject is. So a good example of this would be mountains. So I'm going to start out with uh, this long piece of um, canvas. I'd like this to be kind of a panoramic effect. So, um, and I'd also like the sky to be a little bit more ominous this time. So I'm going to use a little bit of black. Usually skies are kind of bluish, but I'm going to go with black here um, to create a little bit of a, ten a bit of tension in this one. So, um, and it's okay if you go down and see how I'm kind of just fading. I'm just kind of fading down into the foreground. This creates a more natural transition from the background to the foreground. Okay, and then what's important though, even though we're doing foreground and background, um, and the background being shrouded in mist, it's still important to have good detail. So we're going to do mountains. Um, these are my mountain tops. And as you can see, you can kind of help help them along a little bit if they don't make it all the way across. But um, I try to make these jagged mountain peaks, very rugged peaks. Um, I like to add detail. So even though these are in the distance, I think they need to have some detail in them. And just a good, a gentle press will add some good detail to those mountains. Now the foreground, I want to be somewhat dead. So I'm going to use a little bit of brown. Um, for the foreground. And of course with this one I want to create that distinction between ground and sky so I use some yellow there. And press along, that helps add some realism. Um, I think to fully fill out the mountains I'm going to add kind of an orange glow to, the, to them. This helps them to be even more realistic with um, like if there was, a, there's kind of like a sunset in the background and um, it's kind of shining some light on them. So now um, I'm going to add a couple other little details like a few bushes in the front here. And the way I like to do br brushes, or bushes, sorry, <laughs> the way I like to do, use to do bushes is I kind of, I like to press with my uh, pinky finger sometimes and twist. See how that made a really cool bush shape? And press and twist. That's how I make my bushes. Um, so you might be asking, how do you exactly create that distance, excuse me, how do you create that distance between foreground and background with mist? So I have some pearlescent medium, and I just sprinkle a little bit on there, and this kind of creates the illusion, if you kind of, if you just lightly smear it a little bit, it creates the illusion. See how it's shiny? It adds kind of a depth of distance from the front to the back, the foreground to the background. And, um, to me, I think that's a really cool effect um, so that you can tell there's a definition down here where the mountains start, but then as you go back, it's harder to see them. And sometimes another good technique is to take your whole arm and just kind of rub it slightly on there. I know you can get some on your arm, and that's not very comfortable, but it creates a really good effect, as you can see. And then I finally like to sign it at the bottom with my yellow and my blue. And there, overall, I think a very cool effect about how um, objects can get shrouded in the distance, especially with landscapes. All right, and thanks for watching. And please be sure to comment and subscribe. Bye.